So how does house plumbing work? Well, I'm gonna answer that question in this video, the first video in my series, How Does a House Work? I wanted to start with plumbing because I had a situation that inspired me to do this series in the first place. You know, when you're a home builder and you do this day in, day out for a long time, you know how houses work and you forget that a lot of people don't, even people that have lived in houses their whole lives. So real quick story that inspired this video and the whole series in general is we have a great homeowner who emailed us a little while back with a clogged shower drain. Now, kind of went into her daughter had actually been motivated to snake it and pulled up some debris. Um, again, being a builder, I know that was probably just what we'd call construction trash or debris that gets in that drain during construction because, hey, a shower drain is the only drain that's on the floor. So the tile people working around it can drop stuff in it. It happens. Um, it was the second part of her email that I found interesting and inspired this story, which was, and that clogged shower drain has been making our kitchen water taste bad. Now, if you are out there and know nothing about houses and plumbing, you may be saying, okay, right, Steve, tell me why that is. If you are somebody that knows plumbing or knows houses, you might've just chuckled and said, well, that's impossible because spoiler alert, it is impossible. A clogged drain will never change the taste of the water. So it was this situation, which happens a lot in this business, where I don't know what my customers don't know. I had to explain to that customer that, hey, the clogged drain wouldn't have caused any problems with the taste of your water in your kitchen. Uh, matter of fact, I think I kind of chased down, where are you getting the bad taste from? And she said, the refrigerator. And I said, well, that's a refrigerator issue with your water filter or something to that effect. So it inspired me though to talk about how house plumbing works in general for everybody out there. So I'm gonna start, make this as simple as possible. I don't think house plumbing is actually too complicated to begin with. And I'm gonna start with how the water comes in and how it leaves. Shouldn't take too long to tell you how house plumbing works. To start this journey about how plumbing works, it starts with the water that comes into your house, what we call the water supply. So you will hear the term supply used with several things related to house building. And it means, like it sounds, it is water or electricity or air being supplied to the house. So I'm here at a house that we're building that has city water. There are two ways you will get water, either through a water utility like the city, where you have water lines and a water meter, or you may have a private water well that supplies your house. The concept's the same either way, but for this example, I'm gonna use a normal city scenario where we have water meters. So as we are standing out on the street here, there are water lines or a water line that is running down the street. Usually they're under the road. And then off of that big water line, there are smaller lines that go to your property and end up with a meter on them. So this one's unique because I'm gonna do my thing here and bend down. This is the neighbor's meter next door Ours is going to be right here. What our guys have done is dug down to where the water line is and the water department's about to come in and they set the meter. There are some cities where our plumbers have to set the meter. In this city, the city sets the meter. Then we will hook up to it. So when a meter is set, everything from the street to the meter is owned by the city. If that water line right in there leaked, the city would be obligated to take care of it. A meter is at the end of that smaller pipe and it meters the water usage, in the case of water by the gallon. So everything you run through it gets spins a meter and they are able to come out and see how much water you've used for the month. That's how you're built, how many gallons that you've used. On the other side of that meter is what we call the customer line, the line that runs to the house. That is the customer's responsibility. And so if halfway up this lot, the line broke for some reason, it would be the customer's responsibility to fix that, not the water department's. So we don't have a meter here yet, but they're about to set one. What will happen is the ditch for the water line is actually way over there because somebody marked that the line was gonna be over there and it's not. This is construction and this is the kind of stuff that happens. It's way over here, so they're gonna come back and they'll dig their water supply line. But we're gonna have this meter set and then we are going to have a water line that runs way up to that house up there. So I'm gonna walk up there now. I'll show you the water supply line they do have and how that works when it gets to the house. 
So here's our ditch that's been dug for the water supply line. Again, that's the water coming from the meter up to the house. I'm gonna turn the camera around. It does not actually go where it's supposed to. There was a big blue arrow where they marked for the water. The meter is way over there. So the guys are gonna come back with their tractor. They'll dig over to this. And then as you can see, this turns and starts to go up the hill. They do have some piping right up there. So we've got a little better view here. Our ditch that'll have the water line in it, the meter's gonna be way over there. They will run new line. And you see that water line goes all the way up to the house. That's a kind of material called PEX. It's not old school PVC that cracks easy and requires elbows and things like that. It is a material that has some elasticity to it. It's great, it, it can expand and contract. It doesn't wanna freeze and break. Uh, doesn't break when it's driven over, things like that. So I'm gonna walk up here to the house and show you how the water gets into the house. Okay, so this is it, it's dead simple. Water comes out of the water meter to a line that comes to the house. And then what happens, in this case, we haven't poured the foundation yet. Here in Texas, we are doing concrete foundations. The water line runs under the ground, under where the foundation will be, and comes up in a wall. So this is actually where the water is coming into the house. What will happen from here is the water will branch off it will go to a water heater or heaters. And from those water heaters, hot water lines will go out overhead. They're run through the house with this PEX material here. Uh, same thing the water line in is made out of. This is great material. Again, expands, contracts. We can run it overhead, not have issues with it freezing or breaking. Uh, the hot water goes to all the hot water taps, a tap being your hot water faucet, your shower, anywhere where you need hot water. The cold water split runs to all the faucets that use cold water, as well as some where you only have an option for cold water, like outside hose spigots. So that is your water supply. As the name implies, it is being supplied into the home. It's under pressure because the cities are using big pumps to push this water to where it needs to go. And that's why when you open a tap and it's connected to a water meter, water will run out. Same with any other faucet in your house, any hose spigot you have. And so, that is how water is brought into the house. The water supply is technically an independent system from the drains and the sewer. So the other part of your plumbing is how does the water leave your house? Well, that's through your drains. Most of us understand that where we have a sink, uh, there's a hole in the bottom of it. And if you open the door to look underneath, there's a pipe. So the water comes out of the faucet, goes into the sink and down that drain. What then happens is the drains don't use pressure to move the water out of the house. They use gravity. So what I'm going to do is turn the camera around here and show you some drain pipes. What is happening with these drains is they are all using gravity. So if you were to put a level on these drains, they are all headed that direction. What you've got are cases with different bathrooms, utility rooms, everything that uses a drain merges. So you can see there's going to be a drain here and there's a drain over there. They merge together here and they run that direction, which essentially is downhill. What the drain system in a house does is it's using gravity to take all the water that's going down the various drains that can be sinks, toilets, showers, uh, washing machines, Everything that drains water, takes it, uses gravity to run it downhill. All the various drains in a house merge together into one big pipe that we call a sewer pipe or a sewer exit. So I'm gonna walk down here to the sewer exit. Here's another spot where we've got another bathroom here, several drains. I'm over here in the primary bathroom. Uh, I will show you something interesting here. If you can see behind me, you do see some PEX water lines. What's happening there is that's going to be a freestanding tub. We haven't run the water all the way from where it comes over in the house to here. We have just simply run some water lines to where a sink is gonna go. And when the water for the sink comes in, it'll be tied to there and it'll run over to where the tub is. Okay, 
back off water supply, back to drains. So behind me is where everything is running out of the house in the sewer exit. This area down here is getting deeper and deeper, as you can see, because everything has had to fall downhill. In an interesting note, this house, a sewer exit is a sewer exit. Whether it is going back down to the street because there's a sewer line there, or whether it's going to a septic system, all it means is that all the water that goes down a drain in the house leaves the house in this one pipe, and it goes to either a sewer system or a septic system. In the case of this house, this neighborhood has water, does not have sewer. So this is actually going to tie into a septic tank. Now, I wanna show you something real quick. Let me see if I can kind of get down here. These are what we call clean outs. So as the name indicates, they are designed for plumbers to be able to get in should there be a stoppage somewhere in one of these drains and run a snake. What's interesting is if you can see here, this clean out has a slot that runs that way. The other one has a uh, angle that runs this way. This allows them, a plumber, to come back if there were a clogged drain and let's say they discovered it is on the septic side, they would send a um, one of those machines, uh, snakes, sorry, <laughs> down this pipe, sorry, that pipe, and it's angled so it can run that direction. If they need to go into the house's drain line, they use this pipe and it angles and goes that direction. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is this is where the plumber's work ends, the drain system ends, the sewer exit we call it, and the septic system will come in and put their tanks in this spot right here. Unlike electricity, which is kind of invented out of thin air, or we use little machines to create it, um, and we don't really have to get rid of it when it comes into the house, with water you do. So water is supplied to the house, goes down the drains, and then goes out of the house. And that's it. That's how house plumbing works. There are things you can talk about that make it more complicated, recirculating pumps and loops and all this kind of stuff, but on its surface, water just comes in. It's never actually connected to the drains. It goes down the drains and it goes out of the house. That's it, that's plumbing. I hope this video helps. See you guys in the next one.